All right, Adam, it is midweek, and uh, our media availability is over for the week, and uh, you know the Buffs are getting ready to play USC. But first off, uh, you know, you and I are sort of in, in matching gear here a little bit. Do you want to explain that? Well, some of the media members were taking a double take, like, what is going on with the <laughs> McLaren uh, gear here? But it was cool. A couple weeks ago, I mentioned that – I was going to pull an all-nighter after covering the CSU game to watch the F1 race with our kids, and uh, it turns out uh, a longtime CU fan works for Arrow, which sponsors McLaren's F1 team, and he sent a, a box of gear. My kids were just over the moon, and uh, our middle child had this on, a McLaren hat that you're wearing, a backpack going to school the other day. So uh, they've got some new fans at McLaren, and uh, I asked the, the, the longtime CU fan that gave us this gear, uh, you know about his history and he didn't really want to be in in the spotlight but he knows who he is and and yeah. we appreciate that it, it feels like we almost got our own nil deal here at colorado right yeah i was i was joking with you that like where, where's the car so that we can pose with the car like like the athletes do uh, outside the ralphie statue but i'll take the hat because that's pretty awesome so thank you very much uh, to that fan uh but the buffs you need to get off to a fast start speaking of formula one yeah, racing yeah. they need to get off to a fast start this weekend uh, i think that was kind of one of the themes today as we talked to omari and cooper and uh, and javon antonio especially with javon was like how do you guys get off to a faster start the buffs have got to fix that maybe it helps that it kicks off at 10 a.m this is a football team that's used to practicing mm -hmm. in the morning uh, usc practices later in the day i've said this on a podcast i don't know how big of an advantage that is but it can't hurt, you know, for a team that is used to, to coming out, getting up in the morning and getting going. Uh, so maybe that could play into it. Mm -hmm. um, if it was an easy answer, they would have fixed it right. going into Oregon, right? So yeah. uh, sometimes it's hard to put your finger on why you're out to a slow start. Coach Lewis, Sean Lewis, has mentioned that he's more of a, a play-by-feel and doesn't really script plays. But I think the more of a plan you have coming into a game against a top team like USC, the better off you're going to be. Yeah, not a whole lot of first half points for the Buffs in the last couple of weeks, last three games really, uh, and they've got to get that going. Um, Javon Antonio can be a big part of that. It was big to get him back in the mix last week. I mean, he didn't have any catches against TCU, uh, but that was a day for all the other receivers, right? Yeah. Four of them had 100 yards. Then he misses two games. Javon got back and had, I think, three catches on Saturday. Yeah. Um, so it's good to get him back in there. Um, he's a guy that's, you know, you asked him about learning from T.O., um, who's been here this year. Javon's a guy that I know you and I have both been excited about. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do now that he's maybe back in the mix a little bit more. And that's the experience you get at Colorado playing for Coach Prime is – Remember when we're doing our analysis videos and up comes Terrell Owens and Javon Antonio walking stride for stride after working together on the practice fields after practice. That's a cool experience as Javon Antonio said he grew up watching Terrell Owens so it's been uh, you know a great experience for him uh, but but he gave the the right answer when he was asked what's the the celebrity that you've been uh, the most excited to meet and he said coach prime so yeah. he gave a great answer there uh, but no, he is, we mentioned it before we even knew we were going to talk to him this week, that he is a guy that feels primed for a breakout. Yeah. Ever since he got on campus and, and showed some physicality in those workouts and the one-on-ones over the summer, uh, we've been anxious to see him exert that type of physicality on the opponent. And uh, we'll see if that happens this Saturday. Uh, afternoon. Yeah, it needs to happen. And then uh, on the other side at corner, uh, we're not expecting to see Travis Hunter based on the video that uh, the coach prime, you know, that his team put out this week where he, you know, Travis Hunter, you know, says to him, Hey, I, I want to get back. And coach says, no, we, we need you for later on down the road. Doesn't sound like he'll be back, but Omari and Cooper is a guy that, that uh, needs to step up and he's played well so far this year, but he's that number one corner right now. We talked to him. Uh, what did you think about talking to Omari today? Well, first off, if you go back and watch the Oregon game again, he's one of the guy that stands out that looks like he's playing at 100 percent he had yeah. some i uh, wasn't perfect in that football game but he made some aggressive style plays and i talk about this defense needs to get its edge back and uh, i think omari and cooper is one of those guys that, that plays with an edge and yeah. um yeah, it, it's so much has been made about Cormani McLean and, and the fact that he hasn't been playing. But um, you know, Omari and Cooper came from Florida State, and he's been seasoned. He's had that experience. It makes sense yeah. why he's uh, head and shoulders above where a guy like Cormani McLean is at this point. I am curious to see what they do at that other spot. Obviously, Jacquez Robinson with the big pick last week. But if Carter Stoutmeyer is ready to go and, and gets back in the mix, I, I don't know how you keep him on the, on the field. That's, that's the true freshman cornerback story that really needs to be told because yeah. uh, he showed up looking in the part from day one. I would feel pretty good about Omarion Cooper and Carter Stoutmeyer as, as my starting corners if, yeah. if that is indeed the case on Saturday. Yeah, I agree with you. That duo right there is uh, better than some of the duos that have been here um, 
and there's been some good duos. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but that that duo right there with Cooper and Stoutmire might be one of the top duos we've seen in the last ten years or so. Um, 2016 obviously was the exception. But um, speaking of Carmani, um, we didn't get into this yesterday, but Coach Prime gave a little more insight as to why he's not playing, and um, it really comes down to this is a freshman that's got to learn what college football is all about, right? Well, he went a step further, right, and said, "I check how much film these guys are watching." And, yeah. Uh, you put two and two together. Cormani McLean is not putting the work in uh, from the mental side of things. And uh, he have alluded to the fact that he's missed meetings, been late to meetings. That's just not a way you're going to get on the field and, and have a, a coaching staff has to trust you to put you yeah. out there. Now, it looks pretty good when Cormani was out there for three snaps and made a really impressive play. And so I get why fans then react and go, well, I want to see him play more. But uh, it sends a wrong message to your football team if yeah. they see, okay, this guy came in as a five-star and he's not doing what I'm doing and he's still getting on the field. So Coach Prime, he even apologized for being old school. I don't think he needs to apologize. That's yeah. the way you should go about things uh, as a coaching staff. Well, and everything we've heard about uh, Dion is that's how he went about it. He was a super talented guy that worked extremely hard. It's one of the reasons why he loves Travis Hunter so much is that Travis Hunter is extremely talented but puts in the work. Um, I think Coach Prime has high expectations for Cormani because he sees the talents there now go put in the work act like you want this and um, he said that he said act like you want to be great you know and uh, and we can't put somebody out there that's not prepared for that and so I'm curious to see how Cormani responds to that in this day and age um, we've seen a lot of guys like I'm out you know so I'm hoping that Cormani will you know take that to heart and get better because I think the talent's there I think he can be really good there's not a, a coach on the planet that's going to get more out of Cormani McLean than yeah. coach Prime but it is tough with the transfer portal. Uh, there's so much freedom for players that maybe they don't want to stick through adversities. To your point, it's going to be interesting to see how Cormani responds to this. If he starts putting in that extra work, the sky is the limit for him because yeah. uh, it's never been in question, the physical tools there. So uh, you hope that's the case. But in this day and age, you just never know. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, we'll be back later on this week for a game preview.